Let me hide myself from thee. Welcome to the Steady Anchor Podcast, a podcast in Christian faith and practice, highlighting doctrine and discipleship in the local church. I'm Luke, and welcome to the show. Hello, oh, and welcome to the Steady Anchor Podcast. I am Luke, your host. Today is our first day of the Proverbs Project. In the month of January, we're going through one chapter of Proverbs every day for probably 10 minutes or less every day. I'll try and keep it relatively short. Just walking through the passage, looking for where we can find good applicable wisdom that will help us to uh, to live our daily life well, to the glory of God, to the good of ourselves and others. So um, don't want to stick around too long, but let's just jump in. I'll be reading from the ESV, the English Standard Version. If you have the ability to, you can please join us, turn to the book of Proverbs in your Bible or on your phone. If not, go ahead and just listen along. Chapter 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and let the one who understands obtain guidance. To understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and forsake not your mother's teaching, for they are a graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie in wait for blood, let us ambush the innocent without reason. Like Sheol, let us swallow them alive, and whole, like those who go down to the pit. We shall find all good precious goods. We shall fill our houses with plunder. Throw in your lot among us, we will have all one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Hold back your foot from their paths, for their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. For in vain is a net spread in the sight of any bird, but these men lie in wait for their own blood. They set an ambush for their lives. Such are the ways of everyone who is greedy for unjust gain. It takes away the life of its possessors. Wisdom cries aloud in the street. And in markets she raises her voice. At the head of the noisy street she cries out. At the entrance of the city gate she speaks. How long, O simple ones, will you love being simple? And how long will scoffers delight in their scoffing, and fools hate knowledge? If you turn my my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refuse to listen, have stretched out my hand, and no one is heeded, because you have ignored all my counsel, and none of you would have my reproof. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when terror strikes you, when terror strikes you like a storm, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you, they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord, but have none of my counsel, and despised all my reproof. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way, and have their fill of their own devices. For the simple are killed by their turning away, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But whoever listens to me will dwell secure, and will be at ease without dread of disaster. This is the word of the Lord. Walking back through the chapter, just looking at a couple of different verses, uh, looking for things that stand out, important themes and principles for us to be focusing on. We start at the beginning, and the announcement again that it's written mostly by Proverbs of Solomon, who is the king of Israel, the son of David, uh, between 900 and, 10, and 1000 BC. They are written to help us to understand these words of wisdom, to understand instructions, to grow in our knowledge of the truth, to know how to deal wisely, to act wisely, to know righteousness, justice, and equity, um, to have prudent judgment, that is to judge wisely, to uh, have discernment, to make good decisions, to be discreet, and to uh, to have 
uh, success in the things that we do, to do all things well, to all things wisely. And to do this, excuse me, to do this, he encourages him to listen to his father's instruction, to trust him as a father who's looking out for the good of his son. He gives him these proverbs. He, he urges him to understand these words and to fear the Lord. Because as we know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. God, who is the source and fountain of all truth, he is the grounding of this very universe. He has put all things into place. Everything that exists, exists because of his decree, because of his creation. Everything that happens, happens under his power and his sovereignty. Um, he is the all-wise. He is the God of truth. He is the God of light and life. Uh, he is the one who establishes the earth, all of creation. He is the one who has put the seasons into place. He is the one who, is, um, who has put these principles into practice in the world around us. He is the one who establishes these things, that logic and wisdom are attributes essential to God. All attributes of God are, are essential to him. He's not um, made up of pieces. He's not a little wise and a lot loving. He's not a little holy and a lot merciful or stuff like that. But no, wisdom is essential to who he is because it is part of his attributes. And because he is the God of all wisdom, because he is the God who is holy and powerful and mighty, we should fear him out of reverence, out of respect, and also out of love, knowing that he is our good father but as a good father, he disciplines us. It is the fools who despise wisdom and instruction, the ones who forsake their parents' teaching, who forget everything that they've been taught and just go their own way. Those are the foolish people, and it will lead them to their destruction. The writer, Solomon, warns his son about the people who were going to, to come and try and influence him to join them in sin. The sinners will come to them and say, hey, we're going to... We're going to go rob somebody. We're going to go lie in wait. We're going to steal their purse. We won't get uh, caught. Uh, we'll spring upon them like death itself, and we'll get away scot-free. And Solomon says, my son, avoid them as best you can. Avoid them at all cost, because they are going to fall into their own trap. The riches that are gained by greed and injustice takes away the life of its possessors. He warns him, if you go the way of the sinners, if you follow after those who entice you to do evil, evil and destruction will come upon you as well. And then we see at the last half of the chapter that wisdom is personified. It's given the characteristics of a human. It says that wisdom cries loud in the street. We see this as a recurring theme through the book of Proverbs, that Lady Wisdom is out there calling with a loud voice and treating everyone who would listen to come in and learn, to choose life, to learn what is good and what is true, to hear what is, what is right and what is wrong, to listen to wise words of instruction and to seek life through that. But because people do not listen to wisdom, because people do not ultimately fear the Lord, they go to their own destruction. They go abandoning wisdom to the ways that they think will bring them abundance, but in the end will leave them impoverished. It'll leave them poor and sick and ultimately to their deaths. So how do we apply this verse? These chapters, sorry, these chapters, darn it. <laughs> how do we apply this chapter, these verses? Well, we focus on our reverence and fear for the Lord. We understand that he is the God of truth. We trust him to give us knowledge and wisdom and insight. We pray for that, and we, we listen to his leading and his guidance. We also seek to obey, to hear, to understand the words of wisdom. We seek to act wisely. We seek to go away to avoid the sinners who will entice us to join them in evil. We seek to listen to Lady Wisdom, and she calls a lot in the street. We seek to live in a way that's honoring to God honoring to our parents, honoring to the people around us, a life that is truly walking in wisdom. Well, that's chapter one. I hope you'll join us again tomorrow for another chapter of Proverbs and our Proverbs Project. Love God, love the church, and love your neighbor as yourself. Have a good day.